Hello everyone, this is Vineet Pandey. Good evening. How are you all? So guys, as uh, I tried to make a video on Paradise Lost and I got a lot of positive reviews. In fact, a lot of people they started requesting me to start more and more videos. And this is the time I'm going to talk about the most important writer, Alexander Pope. Yes, Alexander Pope, the person who has been called the literary dictator of his age by Compton Rickett. Remember, Compton Rickett has used the word literary dictator for Alexander Pope and Samuel Johnson. We are going to talk about Alexander Pope. He is mostly misunderstood. Sometimes people they believe that he was mentally retarded or he was not a good man because of his good satires. Well, I will tell you about Alexander Pope, his lots of most important uh, you know, uh, activities done uh, during the Augustan age, his importance and his famous work, Rape of the Law. Along with these things friends, when you are done with the video, if you want me to make more videos on various topics, you can simply suggest me in the comment box. Along with this thing, just share and subscribe so that I can go for various topics of paper third. Now, we talk about Alexander Pope. <clears throat> so, guys, Alexander Pope was born in 1688 and he died 1744. He could not attend his schooling because of his physical deformity. He had a hunchback and this was the reason that the school kids, they would make fun of Alexander Pope. In fact, because of his hunchback, he was rejected by a lady. Mary Bartholomew Montaigne. He went to propose her, and uh, she just had a boisterous laugh over him. She made fun of him, and Alexander Pope wrote a satire on that lady. This was asked in net exam, December 2011 net exam. There was a question that who has written an elegy on an unfortunate lady. So it is written by Pope on the lady Mary Bartholomew Montaigne. We talk about Alexander Pope's literary career. See, he has written a lot of great works. The like, famous one we have is on criticism 1711. Well, uh, I'm not going to uh, discuss with the, uh, the topic of criticism, but still, 1711, when he wrote essay on criticism, he has simply imitated Horatian ideas. And uh, in fact, Lady Mary Bartholomew Montaigne herself said that Pope's literary criticism is simply stolen; nothing is original. In his own uh, theory of the literary writings and how to be a poet, how to be a better critic and writer, Pope simply says that that we should imitate the Greek classic writers. He believes that by imitation, we can simply achieve the perfection. Here we have the famous quotation from Asian Criticism. Let Homer's work be your study and delight. Read them by day, meditate by night. So Pope wants us to copy them. Homer stands for the Grecian classics. And why do we need to copy the Grecian classics? Pope says that, that true wit in nature not comes by chance, or true ease in writing not comes by chance as those move easiest who have learned to dance. So correct the first line, it was true ease in writing that not comes by chance as those move easiest who have learned to dance. So if you have done the practice of dancing, you can learn that. Then he simply talks that by imitating classics, we can achieve the standard and the other contemporary writers of Pope were not writing, uh, uh, were not imitating that literary content in a proper way. Pope criticizes them. He says that true wit in nature for advantage dress what oft was thought but never so well expressed. So this is how we talk about essay on criticism. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk about something very important. And here we have the most important book by Alexander Pope, Rape of the Law. Guys, one thing is clear here that we are talking about the book from net point of view. Because there are a, there is a, you know, a group of great scholars who have studied Rape of the Law. And there are far better professors than me. They can explain it in a very nice way. I'll just pick certain important points from net point of view. Guys. Recently, we had a question uh, in net exam of 22nd of January, we had a question. So, Rape of the Law has three separate publications. First publication, 1712 with two cantos. Next publication, 1714 with three cantos. And then the final publication of 1717 with the addition of a new character, Clarissa. This was a question in the last net exam of 22nd of January. Guys, so how did they start writing? What happened actually? There were, you know, the Augustan age, which is <coughs> known as the age of enlightenment, age of fashion, age of libraries, newspaper, coffee houses. In fact, Matthew Arnold called it our 18th century indispensable age of prose and reason. This was the time that the youngsters, youth, they were more concerned about f f uh, fashion, life, romance, love. And here we have two real life characters, Arabella Firmer and Lord Peter. Lord Peter was a, was a rich brat and he had a bet with his friends that he would cut the lock of Arabella Firmer. He did that and this became the tug of war between two families. Arabella Firmer came from aristocrat family. Lord Peter was from aristocrat family. And this mischievous thing that created a great issue, a kind of great feud. 
So the common friend of these two families and Alexander Pope, Mr. Carroll, C-A-R-Y-L, Mr. Carroll requested Alexander Pope to write something which can pacify the feud between these two families. So this was the base and this was the reason that why Alexander Pope wrote the Rape of the Law. And here we have to remember this thing that when he wrote Rape of the Law, the first two cantos were published without permission of Arabella Firmer. So when first two cantos were published in 1712, Arabella Firmer warned him for legal actions and Pope apologized in a letter where he wrote that he is using Arabella Firmer as the literary character of Belinda. She represents the 18th century fashionable women and using her as a character, Pope wants to give a message for reformation. Moreover, Pope told a most important thing in the letter that in Rape of the Law, he has employed Rosicrucian mythology, R-O-S-I-C-R-U-C-I-A-N. Rosicrucian mythology, which was earlier used by uh, F.D. Willers in the famous work, Le Comte de Gavilis. Make sure you note down these points, it's a very important thing. Arabella Firma gave her permission to write more and then 1714 edition has three more cantos. Here we have three cantos which are with permission of Arabella Firma and then the 1717 publication of <coughs> the uh, Rape of the Law final publication with the introduction of the character Clarissa. Now we talk about Rape of the Law. Here we have a series of the characters. The first character we have is Belinda. Belinda is Arabella Firma and she represents 18th century fashionable girl. Pope has praised her beauty and Pope calls, uh, there is a famous line, line number 201, Pope says, Belinda smiled and all the world was gay. Here we have another beautiful quotation where Pope has used a reference from India. He says, India's glowing gems unlocks all Arabia breeds from the yonder box. So here he is praising the vanity box of Belinda and he says that Belinda had all the jewels, emeralds, diamonds collected from uh, farthest places. Then the next introduction of the character we have is Lord Baron. Lord Baron is real life Lord Peter. He has been introduced in a very heroic way. Pope says that <coughs> resolved to win, he meditates the way by force to ravish, by fraud to betray. Means Pope says that he can do anything to win. He can do anything to deceive. Then we have the third character, Sir Plume. This has been asked in that exam. Sir Plume is brother of Belinda. Then we have the next character, Shock. It has also been asked in that exam. Shock is the name of Belinda's dog. Then the next character we have is Paul. It's a parrot. Then the next character is Thalestris. T-H-A-L-E-S-T-R-I-S. Thalestris is friend of Belinda and she keeps instigating her. Then we have the next character, Clarissa. The most important character. She is mouthpiece of Pope, spokesperson of Pope. And she has done most of the social commentaries. She is also a friend of Belinda. Apart from these things, we have lots of Supernatural characters used from the Rosicrucian mythologies. We have Spleen, the Queen of Bad Temper. We have Salamanders, Ariel, Gnomes, Nymphs, Sylphs, and many other characters. Remember this thing William Hazlitt has called Rape of the Law the perfection of mock epic. Now I'm going to tell you certain most important quotations which are very, very important and it should be studied from the point of view. First thing, do not forget at any cost. The opening line of the rape of the law, like it is the what, <clears throat> uh, there are something like what amorous fights can start with a basic issue, something, something like that. And the trivial things can start some serious fight because I'm not able to recall all these lines. I'm just giving you the idea. So remember this thing that uh, what dire offense can cause amorous things and something, something, the trivial issue. So make sure you find out the opening two lines of rape of the law. Then the introduction of Belinda and the vanity box and Pete, uh, Lord Peter. And then the social commentary which is done by Clarissa, especially Clarissa when she talks about the corruption of judiciary. She says, hungry judges soon the sentence may sign and wretches hang when so that jury men may dine and wretches hang so that jury men may dine. Then the next comment is on the 18th century fashionable women and here uh, Clarissa says, uh, no louder shrieks beating heaven were cast when their husband or their lap dog breathed their last. So he says, as she says that, that even women were least worldly minded and they had no uh, comparison between the lap dog or the husband. They were, they would cry very equally for them. Then we have a comment on Queen uh, N. Pope targets Queen N and his, his, the lines are, Hear thou great Anna, whom three reem obey, sometimes takes counsel, sometimes takes tea. Then Pope targets the politicians of the contemporary society and he has used a line, coffee makes politician wise, 
and they see the things with half shut eyes. So remember friends that this is how you have to remember most of the important quotations. Pope talks about that the life here was uh, after fashion and people were least uh, concerned with the morality. There are famous quotations like uh, beauty in eyes where pretty eyes may roll. Beauty in vain where pretty eyes may roll. Charm strike the side but merit wins the soul. So uh, yeah, one more thing, there may be some uh, wordings displayed because I just uh, have these things in my brain and I'm recording the video live. So make sure you remember these quotations. Along with these things, when you compare uh, Belinda, uh, Belinda's character with other strong feminist characters, remember that she has been given a different standard. She is a strong character. She knows her identity. She fights for her self-respect. And then she's equally regarded as at the heights of this society. So here we can say that women had the better condition than any other society. Along with this thing, you simply remember there was a question in that exam that Belinda has been repeatedly compared to. She has been repeatedly compared to Sam. If they ask you that why this is called perfection of mock epic by William Hazlitt, because it is an epic which has all the typical qualities uh, imitated from the classical pattern. Along with these things, friends, do not forget this that Pope was the master of close couplets. Close couplet, which was at, uh, invented by Edmund Waller. So you may be asking, what is close couplet? You must ask that. <coughs> close couplet is when the sense or the meaning is finished within two lines, and the sense or the meaning does not require the third line. When somebody is capable of completing the meaning within two lines, there is a famous line by Jonathan Swift. He says, "What I could fix in six lines, Pope would fix in two lines." So Pope was the master of close couplets. Moreover, remember here that Pope has talked about the moralities, the normal human life in his work, Essay on Man, which is also called the Book of Maxims. And here we have certain famous quotes. Pope himself said, yes, yes, I'm proud to see man not afraid of God, but of me. Along with this, Pope gives a very repeatedly uh, oft-quoted uh, comment. Know then thyself, presume not God to scan, proper study of mankind is man. So this is why Pope is an uh, amazing writer and in fact no doubt he is my favorite writer. This is the reason I chose Pope as the second writer. And guys, uh, in fact one more quotation for you so that you will enjoy this. Pope says, we think our fathers fool as soon we grow, no doubt our dearest sons will think us so. So apart from these things, Pope has written Dunciad in 1728 which has satirized Theobald and Colisabo. Pope has commented uh, Martha Blount, there is a line that uh, what you say something and once let fall, what your lips once let fall, most women have no character at all. So please check the line because uh, there may be some wrong thing, word wordings in line one. Along with these things, do not forget epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot. This is very important thing. This has been asked in Maharashtra set and net exams. Pope was repeatedly satirizing Lord Harvey by calling him Sporus. Sporus is a homosexual character. So Pope, as he was a famous satirist, he started criticizing Lord Harvey and he called him Sporus in his many articles and many satires. So Arbuthnot, being a friend of Pope, wrote a letter to Alexander Pope and asked him to stop criticizing Lord Harvey because Lord Harvey was in good books of Queen Caroline and had royal contacts, so which meant uh, which would create problem for Alexander Pope. So this was the letter that Pope replied. So Pope gave his reply to Arbuthnot, and this is called Epistle to Doctor Arbuthnot. Here we have the opening line, which is very important. Shut, shut the door, good John. Fatigue, I said. So this is very important line, and then here he tells Arbuthnot that Lord Harvey does not deserve to be criticized by me. So remember, Pope says that my satires are most strong, powerful, and Lord, Lord Harvey does not even deserve to be criticized by me. And in the same reply, Pope kept on using the word sporus again and again. It means he's criticizing again. And there is a famous quote, who breaks a butterfly upon a wheel? So breaking the bones through a wheel was an infamous punishment of Augustan age. He says that, that my satires are the wheel, the iron wheel, and he's like a butterfly. So why would I use the satires to criticize the person who doesn't even deserve? Moreover, in the same work, Pope talks about his father and is given the introduction of his father, which was a question of net exam. I don't remember the exact line, so I suggest you to find out the lines. But there are lines, he says that he was born to no pride. He says he was a simple man, sober man. Pope says that my mother was clever than my father. So you have to remember this thing. Then the next book we have, Peribethos. 
And along with these things, there are certain other works. You just have to remember that whatever the points I have told are the basic and the most important one. Make sure you go for the other points also. And friends, those who still want to join my online batch, I'm starting the third batch because of the huge response. We have completed two batches. There are 500 plus students. Now I have to go for the third batch because I'm getting calls and people they are requesting. So please add me, please add me. And I really don't want them to be uh, disappointed. So I suggest you all to start texting me on WhatsApp. Please avoid calls. I do not pick calls when I'm in class. So because my students are my first priority. So please text me on WhatsApp. I'll get free. I'll reply you. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Namaste.